Everything was modern once. So there's never a single definition of what modern was or can be. And that became even more true in the 20th century with the rise of industrial production, expansion of a consumer culture. Speed's been very fortunate to develop a very strong collection of ceramic tablewares from the 20th century. One of the designers that I've always found very interesting, who's represented here by a single teacup and saucer, is a German designer named Peter Behrens. In 1907, he was hired by a, a German electrical conglomerate called AEG to design a complete corporate identity for them. Probably one of the first, if not the first, industrial designers to do that. The example in this exhibition is a little earlier in his career, an example of what was then known as Jungenstil design, design for youth, a new style, very angular, very geometric in its form, and also in the very restrained green ornament that he used on that teacup and saucer. Another designer who's represented here through multiple works is an English pattern designer and ceramic designer named Susie Cooper. Susie Cooper began her career in the English potteries. She would design patterns that would then be painted onto the ceramics, but that wasn't enough for Susie Cooper, so she set up her own shop. She began design really treating ceramic as a sculptural medium in a way, in terms of the form, but also as a canvas for what she wanted to apply to those forms so that the two worked well together. One of the American designers represented in the exhibition is named Russell Wright. And he and his wife really set the mold for the Martha Stewarts of today. They were lifestyle gurus in a way. We have a cup and saucer in this exhibition that's actually plastic. I think it shows how these designers, though they were working with ceramic, many of them were interested in the larger issue of what good design could be, free of whatever material that might mean. Another one of the very influential designers represented in the exhibition is Eva Zeisel. And her life story is amazing to me because it echoes the upheaval, the chaos of the 20th century up through World War II. So she begins her career in Hungary then relocates to Germany, decides she wants to go to the Soviet Union. She was arrested and imprisoned, being thought to be perhaps part of a plot to assassinate Joseph Stalin, which wasn't really true. But after several months in a Soviet prison, she was expelled and ended up in the United States. We have a great example of her post-World War II work called the Museum Teapot. It's white, it's austere, it has kind of a bulbous, organic shape to it, and became incredibly influential. So a, a remarkable woman, a remarkable designer, a remarkable talent, too. I think what we often forget when we visit an art museum or we see an exhibition like this is that what we show was on the avant-garde. For the middle, upper middle class consumers, they were making a statement that they were modern in their own way too. The examples that you'll see here are really set apart from tradition. And that's how they find their way into an art museum.